Who's up next? It's me. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's me. And a slightly more serious note, though, because I think the police now have the toughest job in this country. We're constantly sending the mixed messages as members of the public. If we cast our minds back to Hare Hills just a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago even, we saw the police retreating from rioters en masse. And we and the media called them weak, soft policing. And then just a couple of weeks later, this Manchester airport incident has shown the police to be too forceful. I feel deep, deep sympathy for our police officers. They're constantly being dragged through the mud on social media. I have been guilty of this as well, by the way, and by the mainstream media. We need to send a clear message to our police officers as to what their remit is, what we find acceptable. Personally, I think policing has been far too weak in this country for too long. We've been pandering to minority groups for far too long. And actually, we need to re renew our contract with the police and give them more tougher powers like they have done in Europe. Mm. Would you James, arm the police? I think they are armed where necessary. I wouldn't like it to become like America here, mm. where we've got police running around with guns. I think that would be rather threatening. But I do think that the cases which we use armed police, are, they are very good, they respond very quickly, and they're extremely professional. Yeah, Bab but says no one will want to join the police. They'll be leaving in their droves. And I do, th I do think there's an element of truth to that, because mm. I do, I, they can't do right for doing wrong. They become TikTok stars, right? People yeah. are live-streaming them uh, when they're trying to do their jobs. And actually, I, in the context of, of that, that particular uh, photograph, if it's somewhere like an airport, you do need policing, right? You need policing and it needs to be, to be tough yeah. as well. The amount of messages I've had from police officers over the last couple of years who are actually sick to death of the job now because they can't do right for right and everything they do is wrong whether they are trying to appease community groups that, well, we've seen the Manchester police have just put out a statement today saying they're going around speaking to community leaders. Well, you do it for one group of people, but when we watch the, the football rights, do we have then community leaders going out to, to groups of English people where they are? We don't have that. That is what people really dislike. They feel like it's two-tier policing. So we really do need to get this right as a country because we're getting to a point now where whatever side you're on, the left, the right, or any community, you're all starting to hate the police. And when that breaks down, we get lawlessness. I do think that we have to have some empathy, yes, for the police and how difficult that job is. But none of us are police people. We haven't worked for the police. I don't think we have any knowledge really of how difficult that actually is um, and I know it's our job to kind of come on here and, and say stuff like you just have and it's a really good argument and a good point but actually we don't really know and in general I do think the police are doing a really good job. Yeah, no, I think um, I think that's right. The, the trouble is, I think half the time the police do have the powers, um, but don't know how to exercise them or where, where the, the the line is drawn. Whether they'll be the ones that are then you know targeted or you're subject to sort of complaints and all kinds of things. But I always think we've got to remember the people on the front line are the people on the front line. The decisions about policing, whether it's about you know, um, football uh, 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 contaminant, uh, containment or whether it's about what happened at Manchester Airport, the decisions come sometimes from the very top. Or if you're policing a protest, you know, where's the line between you know the protest on a Saturday afternoon in London, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but it always comes from the top. But it's the people on the ground that you've got to feel sorry for because they are the brunt of, or face oh, the brunt of, of, of the abuse and what we're seeing all the time. It, I, th I think for a lot of people, it feels like when there are minority groups involved in policing, that there is a big protest that follows it. The police back down. We saw that with the Roma community, the children ret returned to the families. Mm. And in this case, we have the police apologising to those people mm. when they have shown perhaps, I mean, we'll wait to, wait to see more, perhaps mm. force where necessary. That officer felt he might needed to have used force to neutralise a threat in an airport. Bearing in mind, in most countries in the world, you wouldn't be alive if mm. you'd done what that... The, the, the police in America would have had you'd be gone, and right? The, and it, it, Alex, it, apparently there's new footage that shows actually punches being thrown towards the female officers. Yes. I mean, we've got to remember them in this, in this oh, case. Right? This is my yeah. point, right? And I, I think w w what we've done is trial this officer by social media and the police are themselves now guilty yeah. of doing the same thing. Well, I also, someone read, uh, sorry, someone wrote on Twitter how sometimes some police that are armed are trained to use their feet rather than their right. hands because they have arms on their legs. But do you feel safe in this country? I don't feel safe, but I also have a and lot of empathy. And is that down to policing? It's because of mob rule. Mob rule seems to be overtaking the police now. The police are scared of certain demographics of people. When I was younger, if there was a policeman, I'd be quite scared and people have respected them. Mm. You would never throw loads of eggs at a police station. I've seen that happen mm. in Manchester. The police are too scared to even come out to tell them off, let alone arrest them. They should be arrested on site. They're pandering to 
a group of people and they need to really get tough soon because mm. it's very scary. The police in France are much tougher and in Spain. We have the weakest police. Mm. Yeah, because there, there are so many situations, you know, police have been you know, policing Twitter, for example, and going after oh, people yeah. that make, you know, mm. um, uh, just put out statements on Twitter, when actually there's, and uh, you know, it's just a case in point, it's not sort of relevant to, to anything, but you know, the, the Rochdale grooming gangs, for example, that was systemic failure, not just of the police who had the intel to go after those gangs, uh, it was the uh, uh, social services, yeah. it was the local authorities, it was the schools, it was the local community, there was a, a, lot, of was a, a lot of covers up there, but which we all know about. political but, correctness, they were worried it, about accusations of it, racism. It, 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 exactly. And that's why I think we've got to embolden the police and give them the confidence. You know, the public of the police and the police of the public as well. We police by consent in this country, but that's to keep us all safe. Oh, we've got Robert Peel in the corner here. And you, <laughs> but, 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 but we do. The, soon, the moment yeah. we stop giving our consent to the police, then it, we do turn into a, 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 a dictatorship or a state like America where we have to use force or guns or things like that. We don't want to get like that. Okay.